Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You you got me on speaker because I hear I hear myself in the background, like on reverb. Yeah, I did. Now you're not. Okay, okay. What's going on there, driver? None. How how how's things going with you on at Stevens at uh, during this new year? I guess okay. I haven't been talk about. I don't go back to work till Friday. What you? And it an extended vacation? We we on vacation? Yeah. Well, I came back to work. Um. I did a load for them um yesterday, and then um I've been off since. What is is that? So technically, I, so, is that by choice or is that uh, is is that because? Not, I, I have a doctor's appointment today. Oh okay, well it's by. So I actually, so I actually I was off. Yeah, so I was actually off from the thirty first of December. I was went back to work on the fifteenth. The sixteenth, I picked up a load, picked up a load, dropped it in the drop yard, and I've been off since. Okay. And I don't road till tomorrow. Okay, so this this is by choice. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So that's why there's no there's no need me to leave Florida and then they gotta route me back to Florida and they you know, so let me just stay here and do something local. So I'm 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 hearing throughout other people's conversations that they say that that trucking is going through a thing and all the truck drivers are being affected by it because all these trucking companies don't have freight. They can't move their drivers and 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 things of that nature. Now for me, I and I I work for a company that has no problem getting freight, that has no problem moving me. This is my third year with the company and 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 haven't haven't had no problems. Truck break down, they fix it up. Freight gets slow, they find other freight. To keep us moving is that because other drivers is complaining about their situations does that entails falls over to every driver that's out here i don't i i, I don't think so because i mean i know with me well i'm dedicated so i'm not otr but even with that stevens even with our otr they might have to sit maybe a day or two to you know to, to pick up their loads all depends on where they're at to pick up their loads. If they pick it up a meat load, yeah, they might sit a day or two. But other than that, they they're still moving. Me on craft, I mean, I'm dedicated. So for me, I'm still moving. I might be, you know, a day early on my load, you know, and I'll just sit until I can, you know, to the customer say I can they, I can deliver it early. But other than that, we still moving. Stevens is still moving. Okay, so let's let's chat for a little bit. Let's chat. So. I have this no more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. The question that came in the uh, the Facebook group, and I, I wanted to get you, uh, your thoughts on it, right? All right, so the post reads, been on the job hunt since I graduated school January 9th. It's been pretty stressful. Any advice on what companies will hire an individual on parole and have recent CDL graduate. So I'm thinking he just, he, he was just recently paroled and probably can't leave the state for any reason, unless he can go and get permission from his parole officer to do so. Because if not, he's limited to the companies that he can, that he can actually drive for. He already got red flags and blacklisted possibilities on him already. Like, you're brand new, you just graduated, you're a felon, and you're on parole. So you got a lot of things working against you as far as trying to find, trying to find adequate employment, especially in trucking. Because if you try to get with these mega carriers, they they're going to need you to drive interstate. Your, your best bet will probably to find something local, but even with that, you don't have the experience. That's, that's going to become a problem. But there, there are some companies that will, that will train you for the lack thereof. But even with that, it's still going to be hard for you because – they see you as as a felon. They see you on parole. They see that you're gonna probably gonna have to take time off to 
see your parole officer or do parole stuff that you might have to do in order to honor your parole for whatever years that you're on parole for. So I don't know. I, I don't know. It, I, I just think there's a lot of there's a there, there's a lot of issues going on with this with this young driver that that they pros, that that they probably shouldn't have gotten their CDLs. Probably they should have just waited until after they after their parole is finished or whatever the case. Because now you have your CDL, but you can't do nothing with it. What do you think? What's your thoughts? I agree, but, you know, now the prisons are letting them go ahead and get their CDLs. You know, they let them do, you know, get their whatever whatever degree or whatever they want in prison, they let them get it. But they don't sit and think about it the long, you know, after they get out of there, you know, they hold this degree or whatever. Some places ain't going to hire them, you know. They have to find somebody that that's willing to, you know, they need to find a company, they need to find a trucking company. They need to do the research for these people while they're in prison. If they're gonna allow them to get these degrees and everything, that I mean, I'm all for them getting their degrees. But my thing is, the prison themselves need to research all these places that they can use their degrees if they get their CDL. What companies that allow them to get second chances to be able to come out here and be successful out here because actually you just basically set them up for failure. You didn't really set them up for success. You just set them up for failure. So whatever it was that he did to get in there, he might just turn around and go back. But I'm hoping and praying he don't. But in a way, you could have wait. I mean, like I said, I mean, most places, if you go local, they're going to want experience. If you go to a mega carrier, they're going to want, you know, 10 years, three years to 10 years work history. And if you've been locked up all that time, you, you don't have no work history. Why? I haven't even figured. I I haven't even figured that part. Yeah. That, if you've been locked up for like more than 10 years, yeah, that's that's going to be another hindrance of of that person getting in with a, with a company out here. Wow, I haven't even, I, I haven't even thought of that, but thank you. That's that's why I love conversations like this, man. Listen, you you're Steven. Not only that, you're a trainer. Not only that, you you've been with the company for a lot of years. But also Stevens is a sponsored company as well that helps people to get their CDL. My my thing is this, and let me ask you this, as far as the school part, when people are interested in coming in and getting their CDLs, and this is not just for Stevens, but this is just for all schools, why do you think that these schools don't prepare these drivers as far as letting them know of the hardships that they might face after getting their CDLs? because there's been like a whole heap of new drivers between now and last year that has that been having problems getting with these mega carriers i just found out recently that u.s express is not taking in brand new drivers that just graduated a couple of other carriers is not bringing in new drivers that just graduated why aren't these schools letting these drivers know beforehand that they might be running into these problems. See, and then I think the issue is because a lot of people tell them, don't go, don't go to a company and let them hire you. Go to the the work office, the unemployment office, and get it that way, and then go and find your company. But see, then you do it that way, then what? You're in this predicament where you're at right now. They're not hiring new, new graduates. But if you go to U.S., Express or whoever, and they send you to school. What they gonna do? You got a job, but if you're, I, I feel like some of the people that are that are having a hard time, they didn't go through a company to get their jobs. They either paid out of pocket for their schooling themselves, or they had somebody else pay for it. So now they're in a predicament where they can't find nobody to take them. Now I, I guess I'm going to agree to disagree with you on that fact. Because if people do go through a, a company sponsored school, that's all well and fine. You think about it, they automatically got the job that they went through school for. Swift, 
U.S. Express, Snyder, C.R. England, and and Stevens themselves. But for the most part, they are locked in. Well, let me let me not speak so forth on that because I know there has been a lot of changes in the the payment procedure. Let me put it that way because I know a lot of companies now don't just do the sign here on the dotted line contract and you'll be locked in with us for about a year, year and a half no more. They actually make you sign the financial agreement, sort of say, right? So let me so let me speak on that because I've had a lot of people come to me and be talking to me about contracts with the school. So I can I can I can share mine. So when I came to Stevens, mine was a six month you know, um, I had to work for them for six months. And, and it wasn't saying that if I worked for them in six months, I didn't have to pay my tuition. See, a lot of people don't understand their contracts that the school and Stevens or their company and the school and them have. They don't understand it. They just say, oh, it's a year and I'm, you know, I'm done. No, go back, read your contract. Mine was six months. Meaning I had to work for Stevens for six months. And if I would work for Stevens for six months, the fifteen hundred that Stevens put down, I didn't have to repay back. But I still owed the school thirty seven hundred. So within that thirty seven hundred, me and Stevens, we had a thing. They paid, I paid. Sent the, they sent the check to the school, and my tuition was paid off. See, a lot of people don't read their contract; they just know it's either six months, to a year. They don't read their contract fully to understand what they're talking about. What is it that it, what happens in a year? I literally had to have mine breaking down to me when I was when I started with Stevens. And that's how I found out exactly how my contract worked. Mm-hmm. But people don't take the time to read and, and, and find out the whole logistic behind their contract. All right, so quick question. You you just mentioned that you still owe the school thirty seven hundred. No, I no, don't. No mine is paid. No, 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 no. I'm I'm just saying at the time. Because you've been oh, with okay. Stevens for years, so but at the time, yeah. you said you owed the school thirty seven hundred, and within that time, you paid and Stevens paid. So, what was the what was the seventeen hundred for? Did that wasn't that wasn't the money that was that was paid into the into the school as well? So it was fifteen hundred down. Stevens put fifteen hundred down. The whole my whole school was like five five thousand something. Some around like that. So whatever they put down, and then the thirty seven hundred was what's left. I paid two hundred. Stevens paid three hundred. So they just took the check five hundred every month. Okay, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. So Stevens put down the down payment, and that was the six right. month contract that you signed with them to cover for yep. that fifteen hundred down payment, not yep. the whole schooling. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Okay. So you still had to sign a, a financial agreement, financial help, or finance the rest of the school through Stevens, though. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But at any time after the six months, you could have still you could have left, and you wouldn't have been obligated yep. to Stevens. Right. I just would have been obligated to the school. Okay. Okay. See, that's so that's what's up. But that's I, I think that's what's going on. Like right now, like before it was like a literal contract that you had to, that you sign and you have to be like, okay, I had to work for you for a year or something like that. And then my CDL will be quote unquote free. But if you break that contract for whatever reason, then, then you will be responsible for the money that was paid for your CDL. Now, see, this is the issue that I had at one point because now I see it different now. Maybe, yes, maybe going to a sponsored schooling is, is, is the way now because regardless of the fact, you won't be too much obligated to, that, to, to the company. You'll be obligated to the finance company that you financed the, the money to pay for the school from, right? 
Yeah, that's why I said people need to read their contracts and know exactly what they sign and everything. Just like, you know, I, I tell the drivers that are coming into Stevens and they're like, well, my contract is a year. I said, with well, each school that Stevens sponsor, the contracts are different. So you need to get with the people at Stevens to know exactly what your contract says. Know it, know it for verbatim. So that way, can't nobody do anything to you. Can't nobody say anything. You know your contract. And most people, when they go to make a carrier, they just sign whatever. And just uh, they said a year. That's all I, you know, I got to do a year and then I can bounce. Sometimes it's not even a year. It, it could be more than that. But they thinking, hey, I, I signed this paper. All I got to do is a year. Then they leave and then come to find out later on that they, they, they owe. And they'd be like, oh, well, I thought it was a year. No, you didn't read the contract. You just thought that it was a year. Right. I I, I guess it's because you listening to what all these other people are saying, i.e. TikTok, which, yeah, they they need to stop over there. I'm just saying. Anyway, they, they listen to all these other people that just say, hey, go to a mega carrier, go to day school, and you only have to spend a year there, and then bam, bam, boom, you can leave. But without them reading their contracts through, probably might be more, probably might be less. You're just not, you're not reading your contract. That's, that's the problem with some of these new drivers out here. They don't read the fine print right. or the whole contract as a whole but but yeah but for this particular driver he he's a recent cdl graduate he's just bound by being a felon and and currently on parole and i'm and to be honest with you i'm not even sure if majority of these companies out here that that are self-sufficient is even going to give him the opportunity because he He's recently on parole. Like, majority of them want you to have at least three to five years of the crime or the felony to be absolved by then. But I, I just think these these schools, I, I just don't think they prepare them. I, I, I think when they're in the school, and, and not to say that it is the school's job to be like, well, hey, when you come in here, it's not you're not going to be or you're not going to get that that job right away. Yada yada yada. That's why they say we help with job pl- uh, placement. And then in f- small print, it'd be like, yeah, but we can't guarantee you will actually get hired by that job. You see what I'm saying? So I I understand that it's not in their position to do so, but I just think that they should at least give these guys some real world uh, vision on what on what might happen. Like, bro, if you're a felon and you're coming to get your CDL, there there might be a chance that you might not get hired. Or if they get popped for the DLT drug testing, same thing with that. You get popped with that. The, the school going to be like, okay, well, you already paid for your CDL, so we just going to go ahead and push you through, and then you just have to worry about the rest after you after you get your CDL. Instead of just being like, okay, well, you're going to have to be in the FMCSA's clearinghouse. You're going to have to go through the SAP program, so that's going to make your job opportunities less than what you have now before you came and got your CDLs. I just think that the schools need to need to now start letting these people know that's interested in coming into coming into school to get their CDLs that is it's it's not going to be all that gravy when, after they get it. But why do you think that these schools don't tell them? What what, what why do you think they don't tell them that? I, I honestly wouldn't know why they don't tell them anything. Because I know when I went to, um, they asked me that I know what company I wanted to be with and everything like that. And so I have no no clue. And even with my son, you know, my son's been a CDL driver for two years now. And when he went uh, to school, 
um, he told him what company he was going to. So I can't really per se say why company, why schools are not really saying anything to these people when they come there. But I know the school that I went to, same school that I went to, my son went to, and they both times they asked us, you know, what school, which company we was going with. So I can't per se say why. It would be nice if they are, they don't know what school they, I mean, what company they're going to. It would be nice to let them, you know, be like, hey, it's gonna be a hard time for you to get a job or anything like that. You know, give them a heads up on something when they coming in to do that little interview with the school. Yeah, I, I, I think when you go to either a company sponsored school or or a school that you paying out out of your pocket i i just think that maybe the school instead of just being focused on the money because nine times out of ten that's what majority of them are focused on i really i honestly think three weeks four weeks is really not enough time to to dig into the into the training to get you prepared out here but that's that's just a, that's that's just my thoughts and again i just feel that maybe maybe now not then because there was it, it was a time that companies was hungry and it really didn't matter they they wanted to hurry up and get you in and get you out and get you in the seat and there was a time where they was they was giving out 15 15,000 dollar sign on bonus just to did you just to get you in the seat because these companies was thirsty like that. But nowadays, with companies that just recently shut down just as last year, you got an insurgence of experienced drivers out here to choose from. And these companies don't have to go through giving them fifteen thousand, ten thousand, two thousand dollar sign on bonus because now they could just offer they they could just offer what they offer in and an experienced driver will come in and and snatch it right up so i i just think these schools need to be a little bit more forthcoming with with everything that these new drivers need to know i think they need to talk to them a little bit about the clearing house i think they need to talk to them, well especially about the clearing house like before you even pay like Give me my drug test before I even, before I even pay my five thousand dollars. Because if I, if I pop positive for whatever reason, then, then I want my money back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying. But sit down, probably have a consultation with with these drivers instead of. Instead of just saying, oh, okay, well, come on in, pay your money, and bam, 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 boom, we'll, 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 we'll chop it up afterwards. That's how it was with me. I, I went to uh, Tri-C Trucking Academy. Shout out to Tri-C Trucking Academy. I talked to the young lady. She gave me the tour. I slapped down my credit card, and that was all she wrote. I, I was confident for my drug test, so I didn't have to worry about it. But back then, Clearinghouse wasn't wasn't in existence either so i wasn't worried too much worried about that either but now that it is especially if you're paying out of pocket you might want to just see if you can take the drug drug test prior to forking out that money so that's 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 just my thought will you you have any closing statements would you what, what, what would be your suggestion for new drivers now that's getting their CDLs and they they still finding it hard to find that first company to to give them a chance to drive with what would be your suggestions my suggestion or advice would be just do your own research don't lean on nobody else from social media cuz they're not there to finance your bills they're not there to help you with your bills so do your own research and gain your own experience, whatever company that may come your way that may give you the offer to get your start, find a beat in that company, ride it until you can't ride it no more. But don't let nobody from social media dictate to you where you should go and where you shouldn't go. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. 
Blame it on the things I went through.